Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and for those of you who are here for the first time a great big welcome to you all. Today I'm going to share with you a recipe that I've been working on for quite a while trying to get the texture and the taste just the way I wanted it to be and I finally have. I finally got the texture and the taste right. And so today I'm going to teach you how to make very easy keto egg rolls with a quick five minute sweet and sour dipping sauce that is delicious. These recipes are so easy, so delicious, and if you want printable versions of them, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find printable versions of these and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of delicious, easy keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out a new video. And if you'd like to help to support the channel, make sure you scroll down into the description of the video. You'll find some Amazon affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using my Amazon affiliate link, a small portion will go to me, which will help to support the channel. Even if you don't want the item that it routes you to, you just go in the Amazon search bar, search whatever you want. As long as you are using my affiliate link, a small portion will go to me, which will help to support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. Place two tablespoons of oil of your choice in a large skillet and preheat it over medium heat just until the oil is hot, just about maybe five minutes or so. I'm using canola oil, you can use any oil you want. Add one fourth of an onion that's been finely chopped. I'm using a red onion, you can use any onion that you want. A half of a medium sized zucchini that's also been finely chopped. Two carrots that have been peeled and finely chopped. And one fourth of a medium sized bell pepper that also has been very finely chopped. I'm using a red bell pepper. You can use any bell pepper you want. Add one fourth cup of baby spinach leaves that have been finely torn. If you want, instead of the baby spinach leaves, you can use shredded cabbage. I'm not a big cabbage fan, so I prefer the spinach over the cabbage, but it's up to you which one you prefer. If you prefer cabbage, you can go ahead and use that. Stir all the vegetables together until they're coated with the oil a little bit. Sprinkle about a teaspoon of garlic powder over the top of the vegetables. Add two teaspoons of soy sauce and salt and pepper to your taste. Stir these all together until they're fully combined and all the seasonings are evenly distributed. Cook over medium heat about three to five minutes or until the vegetables are tender but still have a crisp to them. You don't want them to be completely soft. They need a little bit of a crisp to them. Then set that aside for a minute. For the wrappers, in a medium mixer bowl, combine one fourth cup of coconut flour, one eighth teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of psyllium husk powder, make sure it's very finely ground, and one eighth teaspoon of garlic powder. Whisk these all together until they're fully combined and make sure there's no lumps in the coconut flour. Add four large room temperature eggs, make sure they are room temperature so you have a smooth batter and 10 tablespoons of room temperature milk of your choice. Again, make sure it is room temperature. Room temperature ingredients makes for a smoother batter. Whisk these all together until they're fully combined and you have a smooth batter. Once everything's fully combined, let the batter sit for about two to three minutes, just enough so the psyllium husk can start absorbing a little bit of the moisture and thicken your batter up just a little bit. It's not going to be a extremely thick batter. It's, it's going to be runny like a pancake batter, but you do want it to thicken up just a little bit. So just let it sit for about two to three minutes. While it's sitting, preheat a six inch skillet over medium low heat, just until it's warm. Once the skillet's done preheating for just a minute or so, 
and the batter has sat for a couple minutes, give the batter just a little bit of a whisk just to make sure that it has thickened just a little bit. Then generously spray your preheated skillet. Lift the skillet slightly from off the heat and pour about three tablespoons of the batter into the preheated skillet. While you're pouring it, make sure you tilt the pan from side to side so that the batter can completely cover the bottom of the skillet in a thin layer. You do not want this layer to be thick. You want it to be nice and thin. Then cover the skillet and cook it for about 30 seconds or just until the wrapper lifts easily from the skillet. Turn the wrapper over and cover and cook again for another 30 seconds or until the wrapper easily lifts from the skillet and is browned on both sides. Place the cooked wrapper onto a lined paper plate so that it can cool. Then generously spray your skillet again and continue to cook the remaining batter three tablespoons at a time until all the batter has been used. Make sure that each time you cook a new wrapper that you spray the skillet generously in between each use. Otherwise, your wrapper will stick to the skillet. It should make around 9 to 10 wrappers. Once you've made all the wrappers, allow them to cool completely because they are fragile when they are warm. So allow them to cool completely. While they're cooling, place about one cup of oil in a large skillet. I'm using an electric skillet. You can use a large stovetop one if you want to. Just preheat it over medium heat. If you're using the electric skillet like I am, I preheat it at about 350 degrees. So let the oil preheat in the skillet until it's hot. The amount of oil might vary depending on how big your skillet is. Basically, you're wanting it to fill about two inches of the bottom of the skillet. While the oil is preheating, we're gonna fill the wrappers. In a small bowl, whisk together one large egg just until the egg white and the yolk are fully combined together. Then start to fill your wrappers. You're gonna take about a tablespoon or so of the filling, put it into the center of the wrapper, and gently roll the wrapper around the filling, making sure that the sides of the wrapper are tucked in. So you're kind of rolling it like a little burrito. Once you get to the edge of the wrapper, Lightly dip the edge of your finger or the end of a spoon into the beaten egg and rub just a small amount of the beaten egg on the edge of the wrapper so that you can seal it shut. You don't want it coming open while you cook it. Then press it slightly so it seals and turn it seam side down while you make the remaining wrappers. Once they're all made, Place them in the preheated skillet with the, with the hot oil and fry them for about one to two minutes on each side. So you're gonna fry it for one to two minutes or until it's brown. Then you're gonna turn it, fry it again for about one to two minutes or until it's browned. Keep turning it and frying it for one to two minutes until it's completely browned on all sides. It should not take more than about six to eight minutes for it to be browned on all sides. Or if you don't want to fry them, you can bake these. They won't get as brown, but they still will have a good taste and texture. If you do choose to bake them, then with your remaining beaten egg, use a silicone brush and brush the tops of each of the wrappers with the beaten egg. Then bake it at 350 for about seven to 10 minutes or just until there's a light crust on the outside of the wrapper. Now these wrappers are not going to get crunchy. So if you're looking for a crunchy wrapper, these do not get crunchy. They get crusty, but not crunchy. <laughs> so you're not gonna bite into them and hear like a chip crunch or something like that. It's just going to be a nice, tasty, crusty wrapper. Once the wrappers are all done cooking, place them on a lined paper plate just to make sure that any excess oil gets absorbed. Now these size of wrappers are 
more like appetizer size wrappers or side dish size wrappers. If you want bigger wrappers to make large spring rolls, then you just need a bigger pan to cook bigger wrappers and you'll probably need to double the wrapper recipe. Once they're all cooked, put your desired amount on a plate. And I also like to dip them in my quick sweet and sour dipping sauce. For the quick sweet and sour dipping sauce, in a microwave safe bowl or large microwave safe measuring cup, combine 2 thirds cup of apple cider vinegar, or you can use rice vinegar, 2 tablespoons of keto ketchup. If you want a recipe for my 5 minute keto ketchup, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out, and 2 teaspoons of soy sauce. A half cup of brown swerve or brown sugar sweetener of your choice. Use a fork and stir these all together until they're fully combined. Microwave the mixture on high for about 30 seconds. Then give it a stir and microwave on high for another 30 seconds or, or just until the mixture is hot. And use your fork again and make sure you stir it really well. Gradually sprinkle in one teaspoon of xanthan gum and use your fork and stir it in until it's fully combined. Make sure you just sprinkle it in. You don't want to add it all at once. Sprinkle it in and then stir it in and then sprinkle in a little bit more until it's fully combined. Then microwave on high for another 30 seconds and use your fork and stir it again and make sure it is smooth. Make sure all the xanthan gum is fully dissolved. Keep microwaving on high in 30 second intervals until the sauce has thickened. Mine only took about a minute, minute and a half, something like that, not very long at all. Just make sure after each 30 second interval, you're stirring the sauce to make sure everything is combined and smooth. Once the sauce is thickened, you can use it immediately or allow it to cool completely and seal the container. And you can store it in your fridge for about a week. If you do store it in your refrigerator, most likely it will gel up on you. All you need to do, if it does do that, is give it a stir with your fork, pop it back in the microwave for just a few seconds, 10-15 seconds at the most, and stir it again with a fork until it becomes a nice smooth sauce again. Then you can serve it with your egg rolls or anytime you want a quick sweet and sour dipping sauce. Eat and enjoy! And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click the thumbs up like button, click the subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.